Detective, we've been bringing you in the last few moments the breaking news that the BBC presenter, who's been associated with uh, allegations of making cash payments for sexually explicit images, is Hugh Edwards, the lead presenter on BBC News 6 and 10 o'clock news and the, and the news channel. So you can see from that the magnitude of that revelation, which was made by Vicky Flynn, Hugh Edwards' wife, who also gave us this a background that Hugh Edwards was suffering from serious mental health issues. She said he was receiving inpatient hospital care, where she said he'll stay for the foreseeable future. And Vicky Flint also asked for privacy for her family. So a considerable, another twist in this, in this story, which has dominated the news agenda, you know, pretty much totally for the past past several days. In a moment, I'm going to be talking, I think, to Labour's Shadow Defence Secretary, who has wanted to talk to and rightly wants to talk about the NATO summit in Vilnius. We'll get his thoughts, I think, on that. Isabel Harbin is here with me. Isabel, your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, this is a obviously a, a sort of devastating situation <coughs> for Hugh Edwards' family and uh, the fact that his wife has, has said that everything that's happened over the past few days has worsened his, his condition uh, says suggests that there are lots of questions to be asked uh, of, of lots of people across the BBC about uh, their duty of care towards him as well. You, you worked with Hugh Edwards, you, you know his wife. Yes. Just, just t tell me about your reaction to, to, to what's happened. Well, I suppose the first reaction is what a, what a desperately sad situation this mm. is. This was always a story of, of personal anguish mm. on the part of human beings and their families from the mm. original allegation and it never ceased to be to be that and yeah. the the fact that we were talking and we now know now know about Hugh Edwards but we always knew uh, about a, a, a senior BBC presenter made it a, a matter of not just public interest but legitimate public interest mm. um, and the fact that we didn't know the identity until now of the presenter in question had the effect that it was always going to have in the world that we live in which is to magnify that magnify that uh, that interest it made it a guessing game a kind of grisly guessing game and in the end, something of a hunt, which has ended now with a statement from Hugh Edwards' wife. When you look at that, it reflects a certain amount of anguish. Yeah. How could it not do that? Yeah. And you're right. Yes, of course, I knew Hugh Edwards when I joined the BBC uh, in 1992. We were, we were both political correspondents. He, at that point, had been marked out, was clearly marked out for stardom by the BBC. Just as I was joining, very soon after that, he was, he was appointed to be anchor for the one o'clock news, which then was clearly seen as being a step on the way to greater seniority, to yeah. become, as he duly did, the anchor for the 10 o'clock news, the flagship bulletin of the of the BBC, as well as the six o'clock news. And with that went all of what goes with, with that, in the case of Hugh Edwards, he presented Trooping of the Colour, royal occasions. He was, in a very real way, in a way that we you know once thought of David Dimbleby as being the voice of the BBC, which makes him something of a national institution. Yeah. And so the, the, the sensitivity, sensitivity about it is easily understandable, mm. especially now and especially against that context. And in the light of these revelations from Hugh Edwards' wife, it's just another big, big turn in the story. Do That's, you think he can come back from it? Uh, look, if I mean, he wants to, if he's well enough? Uh, look, I mean, look, it's, I'll tell you what, Isabel, it's been difficult enough in the course of these last three days to predict what was going to happen 15 minutes in the future. Mm. That's not a question I think I can, I can answer. I think what, it, what we do have now are, well, as well as a, a, a personal painful drama for families involved with all of this, including Webber's own family, we've got a, all sorts of nagging questions which are now over the BBC. There's mm. the handling of, the, of this affair from the start, since the time of the original uh, reporting by the Sun newspaper. They were were difficult. I mean, yesterday we heard the, the Director General of the BBC describe them as damaging for the, for the BBC, and he was referring principally, I think, to the way the complaint was handled, the way it was not moved and acted upon quickly. Mm. He spoke about the need for red flags at all levels of the of the corporation in dealing with not just this set of accusations, but accusations like this. Mm. And look, life being what it is, there will be other accusations, maybe not quite like this, yeah. but they will be. Yeah. And those are difficult questions for the BBC. And we were suggesting earlier on, Isabel, and we're going to get the thoughts in just in just a moment from another another guest. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk to John Healy in a moment, other things to talk to about him too but questions of judgments of public morality. Yeah. If you happen to be the national broadcaster, but not just the national broadcaster, and you don't get many bigger questions than that. 